Good evening. I'd like to welcome everyone this evening out to our time here. And if, if any of you haven't heard Brother Mays here, you're in for a treat. I'm telling you what, he, 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 he piques your interest to start and he, he don't lose it till he's done. So we're just glad everyone that chose to come out on a rainy evening because rain shouldn't deter us from worship time because if it does, if the good Lord comes on a rainy day, we're all in trouble. <laughs> so, but it's good to see each one of you. It's good to have you with us. Uh, in the way of just a couple of prayer requests, uh, continue to remember Sandy Stevens, if you will, if she's still struggling to try to walk again after the stroke and stuff. And Jackie was telling me that Sandra's daughter has been taken off of the vent, so hopefully she's on the road to recovery. So remember her, if you will, as well as Sandy, and if she struggles with health as well. And as far as I know, that's about it, other than whenever Brother... Maze gets up here, you're in for a treat. We will have our opening prayer now. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we're so grateful that you have given us this opportunity to come together as Christians to, to hear a portion of your word proclaimed and to sing songs of praise unto thee and to offer up petitions unto thee. And Father, we're so grateful that you have sent uh, Brother Paul our way that to speak to us this evening, we ask that you would bless the, the good work that he does for, for your kingdom. We ask that you would bless his ability to, to write songs and also to preach and, and all the other things that he does, that it would bear much fruit um, and that the, the borders of thy kingdom would, would expand all around the world as a result of his good work. We also ask your blessings upon the congregation here that meets in Sanford. Um, we we uh, ask your your guidance upon uh, Brian as he preaches here and labors here and each and every member here. And we ask that uh, we're so grateful that they saw fit to organize this meeting and this opportunity for all of us to come together and to grow as Christians. And, and Father, we ask that you would be with all the members here. And we also ask that you would be with the church at large. Uh, we, we're, we're so grateful for these wonderful opportunities that we have uh, and that, and we ask that you would continue to bless us with many more of these kinds of opportunities. Be with all of our number that, for whatever reason, cannot be here this evening, whether it be uh, illness or bereavement or uh, it may even be negligence on their part. Father, we ask that you would, for whatever the, the need may be, we ask that you would meet it. Uh, Father, we're, we're also... We live into we we acknowledge that we live in tumultuous times, and we ask that you would bless our country. Uh, we ask that we might continue to be able to to worship thee uh, freely, without fear of persecution in any kind of way. Uh, we also uh, we're we are mindful that we are blessed in so many ways, and we know that you're the the creator and the provider and sustainer of all the good things that we have. And, and help us to be mindful of that, even, even in the most tumultuous of times. Be with us as we go about the remainder of this evening, that everything that we do and say would be pleasing unto thee. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. If you would, take out a songbook. Turn with me to number 788. Seven, eight, eight. Seven hundred eighty-eight, please. Oh, to be like the blessed Redeemer, this is our
this time, would you please turn and mark number 901, 901, <clears throat> number 901 will be our song following our lesson. And now, if you would, number 748, 748. Seven hundred forty eight, please. There's a royal banner given for display to the soldiers of the king. As an ensign there, we lifted up today while the grandson ones we sing. Marching on. car parts on the front row. My family from Goldsboro came down over, over, over. I have no sense of direction. None. Well, good evening, church. I'm glad to be with all of you. I'm excited, grateful. Uh, we had a scare this morning. For those of you who did not hear, I woke up dizzy and weird, and I don't normally feel dizzy. I mean, I'm weird, but I don't feel weird. And it was scary, and I actually went to the urgent care because it's not, it, it's not good. I, th I think it's, um, what's it called? Vertigo. Vertigo. And uh, my blood pressure shot up, and it was scary and weird, and I appreciate the love and care was shown for me, taking care of me. It made me miss my wife, i got to say. Bad. I don't deal with uh, feeling poorly because I feel great all the time. Like almost, almost all the time I feel great and I can work all day and I really like to feel good and when I don't, well, my mom says I'm a wimp about it, so. I think she's right. Sing and preach in revival meeting, day three, lesson five. Then you'll be a Christian too. That's the... the um, Roaring run there, God's beauty. Love to show God's beauty. It's a beautiful hike there in Virginia, I think around Pembroke or something off of uh, 460. Beautiful hike, beautiful place to be. No, that's not right. That's the Cascades that's in Pembroke. Yeah, that is off of 220, yes, near Iron Gate, Eagle Rock in Virginia. There's a uh, 
smelting furnace that was there, it's still there, but no longer used. Beautiful hike there as well. Virginia's gorgeous. I get to live there. God loves us. We can sure see it. God's creation shows his glory. Clicker. Forgot the clicker. And it's on. That's where I live. Looking straight up. In my woods, on my eight and a half acres. Just showing God's glory. He, is, he blesses us beyond measure. That's where I live. I've got beautiful timber on our property. I love to walk those woods with my, my dog. And that's the front yard view. There's the antlers. Yeah, a few of y'all have asked me about that. Dad rides along with me. My dad killed that deer. We ate that deer. And dad rides along with me as that's on the front of my Buick. That's my view in the mornings. God's creation. God loves us. I see it. I point to his glory and just encourage you to see his power and his love for us and everything that he does for us. I didn't see you. My brother's here. Good to see you too. Love you. Look at that. How about that? That's a big old crawdad. That's what we call them. So crayfish is probably the real term. You want to see this, kid. Look. That's a big critter, isn't it? That's a crawdad. That's what we call them. So crawfish etouffee is what you might cook with that. Or have a crawfish boil. And that's what we do. That's what I do. I catch those in Radford, where Ken and Lisa are from. God's blessings. So that happens to be a really sweet spot because it is about three feet deep and about one mile an hour and about, I think it's like 200 yards across there. I mean, it is huge. You just, as long as you want to do it, you're going to just keep catching crawdads. Caught a mess, like a hundred in like two hours by hand or with a little tiny handheld catcher. It's actually a minnow trap that you're supposed to set and forget, but I use it to chase them underwater, holding my breath with goggles on, and you can catch one every minute or two, and it is fun. God's glory. So you're talking, you know, it's an 85 degree day, and you're out just loving it in God's creation. God's blessings, I love them, share them with you. Just wanted to share them with you. So we're going to sing 7 times 70 again. Y'all did so great, and I love it. I love it when you sing it with me. It's a blessing to me, and I appreciate you doing that. It's wonderful. And you teach me to be forgiving of my brethren when they sin against me and then repent I need to forgive and if I'm not forgiving then I'm not being forgiven and not prepared to be judged so I really am excited to see Goldsboro here it's wonderful because they know this song so they are now singing this song in their assembly wonderful Lord's Church in Goldsboro teaches each other to be forgiving by singing seven times seventy all right church let's sing it
Amen, church. Thank you. Usually it takes till we get to the words in red lyric before I get chills, but I got chills because the men were singing as we started each verse. You were already on it, and I'm not used to that, so it's just getting richer and richer as we go. Wonderful. Very encouraging. The most encouraging part is that we're teaching the doctrine of Christ. Music is secondary. It's a vehicle for getting the truth of the word out, so thank you for that. Very encouraging. There's buns. We were talking about bunnies. I heard the boys talking about bunnies. Yeah, that's buns. Her, her original name was Norma, but it kind of morphed, and it was Mr. It was, her name was Mr. Bunny for a minute. So she had a few names, but that was buns. And I loved her. She's a special critter. I love God's critters. God's creation shows his glory. It just happened accidentally, didn't it? No, no, no. Design indicates a designer. We know God is real. We know that he spoke us into existence, and that's some of the evidence. Beautiful critter. I am not slumming. That is the inside of that old camper, and I'm not slumming there. So I've got everything I need, and I just want you to know that I'm not slumming. SpongeBob, yes. And I get in trouble because some of the kids are not allowed to watch SpongeBob, and that is okay, so maybe I should take that picture out. Then you'll be a Christian too. The message of the hour. A lot of different ways that people teach people that they can become Christians, but the only way that we can become a Christian is if we do what Jesus said we must do to become a Christian because Jesus has all authority, Matthew 28, 18. We don't get to make it up. We don't get to decide one day. Yeah, I think I heard about Jesus. And I think he's the son of God. I, I'm a Christian then. Doesn't work like that. I did what my pastor said I must do when I invited Jesus into my heart. And so I'm a Christian. Doesn't work like that. We can only know that we're a Christian if we do what the Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus the Christ, the only Son of God, we're only Christians if we do what He said we must do to become Christians. We don't get to decide what it takes to become a Christian. We don't get to make it up. People do that all the time. They make it up, but it just doesn't work. It's just a fable. 2 Timothy 2, 4, 2 through 4. Preach the Word. That's what I come here to do. Preach the Word. Be instant in season and out of season. That means say it whether they like it or not. Instant in season and out of season, whether it's fashionable, whether it's out of fashion, whether they're going to call you, whether they're going to say, oh, he's a sound teacher, or whether they're going to say he's a Jesus freak. He's a Bible-thumping Jesus freak. He's a legalist. He's a Campbellite. Whether they say any of that stuff, I'm going to be instant, steadfast, instant, in season and out of season. Reprove, gentle correction. Rebuke, firm correction. Exhort, warn them. With all long suffering, do it patiently. And doctrine, the doctrine of Christ. 2 John 1, 9. But the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Folks do not want to hear this. I think I just uh, acquired myself another baptism debate. I think that was last night. Yeah. Yeah, I got another one lined up. Last night. I'm working at, at, at that camper. I don't quit working. All right, I took a nap today, but that's just because I was sick. But I think I have a new uh, baptism debate because the people that heard from me that, about the one way of salvation, they don't endure sound doctrine. 2 Timothy 4, 2 through 4. They want ear ticklers telling them what they want to hear, that they invited Jesus into their heart, and therefore they are good. They accept Jesus as their personal Savior, therefore they're good. They are prepared. They are Christians, but they haven't done what Jesus said they must do to become Christians, and those people don't want to hear that. But I'm going to keep teaching them that, whether it's in season or out of season, whether it's fashionable or not, whether they think I'm a legalist or whether they believe the doctrine of Christ that I boldly proclaim. That's what I came here to do. That's what I try to do every day. Abide in the doctrine of Christ. Stand for the truth. Encourage you to do the exact same thing. I don't want you to believe me. That means I don't want you to take my word for any of this. I don't want you to take the word of any person. Not any person who fills this pulpit. Any person that tells you anything religiously, don't believe them. And what I mean is don't take their word for it. Try the spirits. Test the spirits. Test me. Test Brian. Test anyone who stands before you from this pulpit or in your home or online or wherever you might hear a spiritual topic addressed. 
test them. Don't take anybody's word for it. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God because many false prophets are gone out into the world. And we're going to expose them. Yeah. Paul, you shouldn't talk bad about other denominations. I don't. Instead, I expose denominations. You see, I removed that word other because the Lord's church is not a denomination. I expose all denominations for what they are. Divisions from Christ. Not a single one of them exists, exists by the authority of Jesus Christ. I expose them. I have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. Ephesians 5.11 You know when you proclaim the doctrine of Christ, the one way of salvation in the one church that belongs to Christ, when you proclaim it boldly with the book chapter verse evidence, you're also exposing the unfruitful works of darkness when you do so. It, it's two-part. You tell folks that truth. You show them in the Bible. This is not the doctrine of Paul. No such thing. This is not the doctrine of the church of Christ. No such thing. There's the doctrine of Christ because we teach it. We're the church of Christ because we abide in it. We're the church of Christ. You show them this and it shines the gospel light on the darkness of religious division. That's what happens when you proclaim God's word, the truth of it. There's one way of salvation in the one church of the Bible. There is one way to become a Christian. I want to say thank you to Manly Thweet for transcribing this. He transcribes for me and it's, it's beautiful. His work is absolutely beautiful. Then you'll be a Christian too. Talking about the one way of salvation in the one church of the Bible. The one way to become a Christian. I don't have any authority. You don't have any authority. We don't get to determine what it takes to become a Christian. All right, we're going to sing this song um, musically and see what i got to teach. All right. I'm going to sing um, the soprano part of this, and then I'm going to sing the bass part of this, and I'll probably do a little alternating thing where I go back and forth between the two just to show you how it works, the interplay between the two. I'll be switching back and forth, and I bet you get it. It's got a fun bass part. Um, kind of a marching bass part. So the chorus soprano part goes, Hear the word, believe it's true. At the same time, the bass is going, First hear the word, first hear the word, believe it's true, believe it's true. So the interplay is something like, no, I don't think I can do both of those. Hear the word, the word, hear the word, be believe it's true, it's believe it's true. So they interplay, they cross over, they overlap, but that's how that works together. Um, one more thing. Oh, I do have to show this. Um, I'm going to sing the bass part here because there's a really good walk out between name before men. The last line there, it runs into, but that's not all that God. It works like this. Repent, repent of sin, repent of sin, confess his name, name before men, but that's not all that God, so it's continuous, it runs together. Uh, and this note that the bass ends on, that's not all. Not all that God, God has required, required of you. Basses, I need you to land on that note or it doesn't work. That note has to be there. You. All right, one last thing to teach you about this. There is an emphasis on the first syllable of the word Christian, and it's like triumph. I've written triumph into the melody of singing this part. Then you'll be a Christian. Gen 2. It's like, yes, finally I'm a Christian. That's what that is. It's, it's musically triumphant when you hit that one point. That's all I'm going to teach you. Let's sing it. <clears throat> I am a Christian because I did just what my Savior said I must do. To be a Christian, there are some things that God
sweet triumph of becoming a Christian. Amen. I'm so glad I'm a Christian. There is no better life than the life that's lived for God. The life in Christ far sur su supersedes. What's the word? Surpasses. Thank you. It far surpasses the life of sin that I used to live all through my 20s. Selfish, self-serving, godless. There is no comparison the life in Christ, living for God, it's the best life. There is no life that's worth living other than the life that's lived for God. I highly recommend it. I'm a Christian because I did just what my Savior said I must do. Go preach the gospel to the whole world. He that believes and is baptized will be saved. That's what Jesus said in Mark 16, 15, and 16. See, so you got the lyrics right there, and look at that. Truth of the Word, just sitting right there. There's the evidence. Try me. Test me. See if that's not the doctrine of Christ. Right there it is. Black and white. You can see it right there, supporting that first line. That's the, uh, the precedent that Manley set for us. His work is beautiful, and I love that the Scriptures are right there. That, that's going to have to be on every single subsequent PowerPoint that's made of all these lyrics. That's my new standard, and I can't go back now. We've, got, we've set a standard there, set a precedent. That's the way it has to be. I'm a Christian because I did just what my Savior said I must do. He that believes and is baptized will be saved. He said that right after he said, go preach the gospel. The gospel is the good news about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's recorded for us in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. God raised Jesus from the dead. That's the only reason that we can be here hoping for heaven is because God raised Jesus from the dead. That's after he lived a perfectly sinless life and gave himself willingly on the cross. He is the only suitable sacrifice that can atone for our sins because I know I sinned. I also know that you sinned. I do. We can know that because God tells us that, that we have all sinned, fallen short of the glory of God. That's why we need Jesus. To be a Christian, there are some things that God requires of you. I just love this Romans 10, 13, and 16 evidence. Uh, the religious world likes to say, oh yeah, anyone who calls in the name of the Lord will be saved. You know what? They're right. They just don't know how to call in the name of the Lord by the authority of, of Jesus in the one way that you actually can call in the name of the Lord. Romans 10, 13 you need to tie it with 16. 16 shores it up. They're, they're related. They're together. Romans 10, 13, anyone who calls in the name of the Lord will be saved, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. Yeah, we've got to believe that God is, Jesus is who He says He is. We've got to call on the name of the Lord. That means appeal to His authority. It really is saying, Jesus, save me in the one way that you offer to save me. Well, we see from Romans 10, 16, that it's obeying the gospel is how you call in the name of the Lord. We're going to keep looking at that, but anyone who calls in the name of the Lord will be saved. Romans 10, 13, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. And we're going to have to obey the gospel to call in the name of the Lord. The chorus begins, first hear the word, believe it's true. John 6, 44 and 45. 
No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught of God. Every man, therefore, that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. We've got to hear the Word. We've got to hear the truth about Jesus. It's contained in the completely sufficient Word of God, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. People talk about, the religious world talks about how God draws them. You know what? God draws us all in the exact same way. The gospel offer for salvation contained in that completely sufficient word. He doesn't say, well, you can come to me if you'll just invite me into your heart, and you can come to me if you were sprinkled as a baby, and you can come to me if you'll repent and be immersed in water because Jesus said so for the reason Jesus said. That, that's not how God draws. God draws in one way. That same offer for salvation is available to everyone. The grace that offers brings salvation has appeared unto everyone, Titus 2.11. So God draws us with the Bible, with words. We read, study, hear the Word, and we get faith, Romans 10, 17. Everyone that's heard, has learned of the Father, comes to God, John 6, 44 and 45. Hear the Word, believe it's true. Men and women, when they were believed, men and women, when they believed the preaching of Philip, were baptized, Acts 8, 5 and 12. That needs to be edited, updated with... Acts 5, 8, 5 in there. Repent of your sins. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11 tells us a list of sins that we would need to repent of. There's a whole bunch of folks that are not going to enter the kingdom, enter heaven, because they're practicing those sins that are listed there. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11 lists a scary, sobering list, and a lot of people just practiced it. Some of the translation actually rendered it as practice. Those who practice these sins are not going to enter heaven. That's different from walking in the light. Practicing sin, open rebellion, you know what God said. You know what some of those sins are? Gambling and fornication, many kinds of fornication, and idolatry and drunkenness. Those folks are not going to heaven. Such were them, but they were washed in that passage. That's the opposite. Giving in, walking in those sins, practicing those sins, open rebellion, unrepentant, no desire to change, that's practicing sin. That's the opposite of walking in the light, which is hating sin, hating the sins that separate us from God. We've got to repent of our sins to become a Christian. We've got to say, you know what? I know what God says about this, and I'm going to make every effort to overcome these and trust in His promises that He's made a way of escape for us. Confess His name. Acts 8, 37. Beautiful truth right there. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I love saying that. When, I, when I'm preaching, I look forward to getting to say that out loud. I love to say, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I love to say that because I believe it, because that's where my hope is. It's in Jesus Christ. His perfect life, His perfect death sacrifice, His perfect blood. He's the only suitable sacrifice. That's why I like to say it out loud. I like to confess His name before men. It's not confessing your sins. It's confessing the deity of Christ is part of becoming a Christian. Repent of your sins. Confess His name before men. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That's from the Ethiopian account of conversion from Acts chapter 8. But that's not all that God has required of you. It's not. I've got 2 Thessalonians 1, 7 through 9 right there loaded up. It is potent and it is terrifying for those who think you don't have to do anything. We just said, we just learned that Romans 10, 13, and 16, anyone who calls in the name of the Lord will be saved, but they haven't all obeyed the gospel. That is linked permanently to this truth in 2 Thessalonians 1, 7 through 9. And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with His mighty angels in flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power. A sobering warning. Easy believism, or if you don't obey the gospel, it's flaming fire and the vengeance of God. You know what that's not? It's not an opinion or an interpretation. It's not Paul's doctrine. It's not a man-made doctrine. It's not the doctrine of the Church of Christ. No such thing exists. It's 2 Thessalonians 1, verses 7 through 9. 
flaming fire and the vengeance of God for those who don't obey the gospel. Don't believe it in vain. Obey the gospel. That's not all that God has required of you. Go down in the water in Jesus' name, by His authority, because Jesus said so. Then you'll be a Christian too. We just covered that in the, in the course there. Back it up. First hear the word, believe it's true. Repent of your sins, confess His name before men. But that's not all that God has required of you. Go down in the water in Jesus' name. Then you'll be a Christian too. You, you can't be a Christian in, in the way that you want to become a Christian. You can't become a Christian in the way that I would want to be a Christian. It doesn't matter what I think. and It doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter what any person thinks. It matters what God has determined and revealed to us succinctly in His inspired word that completely equips us. Second verse, to be a Christian, the Bible shows just what my Savior said you must do. Look at all that harmonious, look at that. I wonder why I said Acts 2, 8, 10, 16, 18, 19, and 22. Because they're all the same. That the book of Acts is the book of conversions. It's the book of people becoming Christians. And in every one of those accounts, every single one, it starts with belief. They heard the word, they believed it. And then it ends in baptism. Every single account of conversion. Guess what that's not? You know what I'm going to say next. It's not an opinion. It's not an interpretation. It's not a man-made doctrine. It's the biblical record. It is God-breathed fact that every account of conversion to Christianity begins with belief and ends in baptism. It's just a fact. It's a fact we can either accept, submit to, repeat, abide in, or we can push against it. Some people do, and they call us Campbellites. You know what I say? You can prove that in one way. Tell me something. Provide evidence of something I'm teaching you that is peculiar to Campbell. You know what's not peculiar to Campbell? Acts 2, 8, 10, 16, 18, 19, 22. That's not peculiar to Campbell. That came, a, that came long, long, long before Campbell. Yeah, that's just God telling us how it is. If you want to be a Christian, you're going to do what they did. If you do what they did, you will be what they were, Christians. And Acts eleven twenty six. do it with me. The disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. One more time. The disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. Acts eleven twenty six. You need that. Put it right there. Hide it in your heart. To be a Christian, there are some things that God requires of you. Hebrews 5, 9, And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. It's obedience. It's always about obedience. I can tell you what it doesn't say. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that invite Jesus into their heart. Doesn't say that. Guess where else it doesn't say that? Anywhere in the Bible. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that say a sinner's prayer that was made up last century. No, nah, no, nah, it's a fable. That's a fable. 2 Timothy 4, 3, 2 through 4. It's a fable. Being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. The ones that do what he said they must do to become Christians, that's who he is the author of eternal salvation for. That's who he's going to save, the obedient. He promised. First hear the word, believe it's true. Repent of your sins, then confess his name before men. But that's not all that God has required of you. Go down in the water, in Jesus' name, then you'll be a Christian too. Boy, I love Acts chapter 2. It's, it's my favorite. It just is. I love it. Calling on the name of the Lord is there too. We learn more about it too from that passage, from that account of conversion, the first gospel sermon, Acts chapter 2, the day of Pentecost, A.D. 33. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved, Acts 2.22. I think it's 2.22. Now I'm guessing, second guessing myself. Now I've got to go look. You're going to have to bear with me on that. I just can't leave it hanging there. What? I feel like it's 2.21. Come on, Paul. Yeah. 
Acts 2.21, I have to forgive me on that. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't leave it out there. I couldn't like wonder if I did it right and then kick myself later if I had it wrong. Well, there's powerful tools. I just looked it up in the Bible here on this iPad. Your phone can do it too. Your iPad can do it. The computer can do it. And although the paper Bible is entirely sufficient, boy, I love these powerful tools. I can manipulate these tools much faster. I can search things by specific terms. I like the YouVersion Bible app. No, I'm getting not, get, not getting a kickback or anything on that. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call in the name of the Lord shall be saved. So that's in harmony with Romans 10, 13. Because the Bible doesn't contradict itself, we have to learn some truths here. So whoever calls in the name of the Lord shall be saved, Romans 10, 13. But they have not all obeyed the gospel, Romans 10, 16. So here, here he said the same thing. It shall come to pass that whosoever shall call in the name of the Lord shall be saved. At that point, he preached Jesus, the first gospel sermon, and he told them that they had killed the Son of God. They killed the Son of God with their sins. You and I did the same thing. We killed Jesus, the Son of God, because we have sinned, and we needed a solution to that problem. His blood is that solution. Whoever calls the name of the Lord shall be saved, Acts 2.21. Y'all killed Jesus, Acts 2.36. What do we do about that, Acts 2.37? We learn there that they did not know how to call on the name of the Lord. They didn't know how to call on the name of the Lord. He just told them, just call on the name of the Lord. Who, anybody who calls on the name of the Lord is going to be saved. What do we do? Well, he just told them to call on the name of the Lord. It must be, Lord, save me. It must be some fictional sinner's prayer. It's not. We can know it's not because Jesus said in Matthew 7, Not every man that says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. It's not verbal. That's not how you call in the name of the Lord. It's not verbal. Y'all killed Jesus. Us. Them. What do we do about that? Acts 2.37. So he told them how to call in the name of the Lord when he said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you. He commanded it. In the name of Jesus. By the authority of Jesus, he said that. For the remission of sins? Does that mean for? It means for. Yeah. In order to obtain the remission of sins, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That offer for salvation is good for you and everyone who follows. Acts 2.39. So save yourselves, contrary to Calvin. Save yourselves. Oh, I can't do anything to save myself. Yeah, you can obey the gospel. You can call on the name of the Lord. Yeah. Faith comes by hearing. The Word of God, Romans 10, 17, I look in the Word of God and I find out that I need to call on the name of the Lord by being baptized. Appealing to His authority, asking Him to save you in the one way He offers to save. 3,000 people took Him up on that offer that day. Can you imagine the joy? Can you imagine the apostles' joy when 3,000 people said yes to Jesus' offer for salvation for those who repented and were baptized? Praising God and having favor, the Lord added to the church that day. Those who were being saved, those who did what He said, that's Acts 2.47. Then they that gladly received His word were baptized, and that day added unto them about 3,000 souls, that's Acts 2.41, and it was Jesus who did it. Jesus put them in His church. And that offer for salvation, Acts 2.39, backing it up a little, is good for them and everyone who follows. Anybody who's hearing my voice, that offer for salvation, it's good for you too. You repent, you're baptized, Jesus puts you in His church. Really, that's the, uh, the Lord's invitation for, for after this message is over. But that's the one way of salvation, that's the one way to become a Christian. Acts chapter 2 bears that out just like the rest of those accounts. Come be a Christian. Why not do just what my Jesus said you must do? John 3 you ever had anybody say, I don't have to be baptized? Don't you know John 3.16? I do. John 3.16 is in a baptism sandwich. Did you know John 3.16 is surrounded by baptism? Yeah. John 3.3, 3, you must be born again. John 3.5, you must be born of the water and the Spirit. John 3.16, whoever believes should not perish but have everlasting life. Then they stayed and baptized because there was much water there. John 3, 22 and 23. John 3, 36 is in harmony with several scriptures we've already referenced here. That would be Romans 10, 13 and 16. Anyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. Also with uh, 2 Thessalonians 1, 8 specifically, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. But 3, 36, John 3, 36 and this John 3, it's the same thing. Now, 
The King James is my favorite. It is. I like it. More of it is hidden in my heart than the rest. Even with the these and thous, I like it. However, having said that, the American Standard Version and the New American Standard Bible are more accurate to the original Greek here, okay? And that's because it says, whoever believes has life, but the one who does not obey, the wrath of God abides on him. Those are in harmony, folks. 2 Thessalonians 1.8, Romans 10.13 and 16, and John 3.36, perfect harmony. We have to obey He's the author of eternal salvation for those who obey Him. Come be a Christian. Why not do just what my Jesus said you must do? To be a Christian, these are the things that God requires of you. You know the Galatians obeyed, Galatians 3.1, in faith. Galatians 3.26, by being baptized. Galatians 3.27, resulting in them putting on Christ, being clothed in Christ. Some translations render it. To be a Christian, these are the things that God requires of you. You're going to have to have enough faith to take God up on his offer for salvation for those who repent and are baptized. First, hear the word. Good news about Jesus, the gospel. Believe it's true. Believe that Jesus is who he says he is. Repent of your sins. Make a change of mind that results in a change of behavior. Jesus said, unless you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Luke 13, 3. Confess his name before men. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I'm going to keep saying that till I'm dead. I want everybody to know that I believe that, and I want them to believe it too. But that's not all that God has required of you. Flaming fire for those who don't obey the gospel. Go down in the water in Jesus' name. That's by His authority. Then you'll be a Christian too. Only then. Only when you have done what all penitent believers did in the book of Acts will you have become a Christian. Will you have been washed in the blood of Jesus? Had your sins washed away. Acts twenty two sixteen. 16. Been clothed in Christ. Galatians three twenty seven. Gotten into Christ. Gone through the resurrection, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Romans 6, 3 and 4. To be saved by baptism, like Peter said. 2 Peter 3, 20 and 21. Just what my Jesus said you must do. Do you know he said baptism's a must do? You know, he actually said that. Must do. Saul, on the road where he was not saved, what are you talking about? Blowing minds right there. Saul on the road where he was not saved. Saul was not saved on the road. He wasn't saved on the road. He wasn't saved until he did what Jesus said he must do. So he sees Jesus as a blinding light, hits the dirt face first. Lord, what will they have me to do? Oh, he already called him Lord. He must be fine, right? No, no. Jesus didn't tell him he was fine. In fact, Jesus has said, not every man that says to me, Lord, Lord. That means it's not enough to say, you are Lord. You're the Son of God. I recognize it. I believe Jesus is the Son of God, that beautiful truth. It's not enough. That's not all that God requires of you. Saul saw Jesus, hit the dirt. Lord, what will they have me to do? Go to town, Saul. Find out what you must do. That's Acts 9-6. Look, if you needed anything in your arsenal, you need Acts 9-6 and Acts 22-16 together. Okay? That's the beginning and the end of Saul's conversion to Christianity. Lord, what will they have me to do? Saul, go to town to find out what you must do. He actually said that. The words of Jesus. So whatever it is that Saul finds out to do when he gets to town is a must do according to Jesus. You know what that's not? It's not an opinion. It's not an interpretation. It's the words of Jesus. Saul, go to town to find out what you must do. So he finds Ananias who asks him a question and tells him what he must do. What are you waiting for? If anybody here has not obeyed the gospel, what are you waiting for? Get up, be baptized, washing away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. You know what that's not. It's not an opinion. It's not an interpretation. It's a question and a must do from Jesus. What are you waiting for? Get up, be baptized, washing away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. We brought it all home there with that calling on the name of the Lord, haven't we? God put it there together. He doesn't need our help explaining that. We just need to repeat it faithfully. I sure do love you. I want you to be ready when Jesus comes in the clouds and judges us all on one great and terrible day. 
It's going to be flaming fire and the vengeance of God for some because they're not ready. Today is the day of salvation. If you haven't done these things, you're not a Christian. I didn't make it up. I just love you enough to stand on it. To say there's one way of salvation in the one church that belongs to the one Savior, Jesus Christ, the Son of the one God. That's the one faith that we read about. The one way of salvation. If you haven't done these things, you're not a Christian. You're going to have to hear the word, believe it's true, repent of your sins, then confess His name before men. And that's not all that God has required of you. Go down in the water in Jesus' name. Then you'll be a Christian too not before. I want you to be saved. That's why I work. I want you to go to heaven. I want you to have the blood of Jesus credited to your account. You can only get it in the one way that he offers. If you haven't done it, now's the time. If you've lived in sin, some private sin, you need to make it right with God in your own mind, sure, do that. But if you need help from your family, just go ahead and ask us. I got help this morning physically when I needed it. Boy, let me tell you what, it is good to be part of God's family. Hours from home, my wife not here to hold my hand and tell me to stop being a wimp. I was loved on. I mean, I've been loved on with food all week, and I, I talked about that being great, but in my desperation, I was loved by my sisters, my family. That's the kind of thing that the church does. If you've got a private sin, you need to make it right with God, it's time. Don't practice it. 1 Corinthians 6, 9, 10, 11. Instead, overcome it through Christ who strengthens you, Philippians 4, 13. Look for that way of escape that he's offered you because no temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with temptation will also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Take him up on that. Look for those ways. If you need to obey the gospel, now's the time. If you need to get right with God for some private sin, do it privately or ask for the prayers of the church. And if it's public, you need to do it publicly. If you brought reproach on the Lord's church by living in sin and the world's seen it, you need to make it right. You need to change your mind and therefore your behavior. I sure do love you. I want you to go to heaven. I want you to be prepared when Jesus judges us all. If you have any kind of need, make it known right now while we stand and sing. Bring my sins to me. Thank you all for being here tonight. It's um, good to be together. Thank you for braving the weather. Um, pray that you um, have safe travels back to your destination. Um, Brother Chris is going to close us in prayer.
Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we um, thank you for uh, this time in which you have allowed us to um, come and hear a lesson which came straight out of your word. Um, we thank you for all of the many works in which Paul does in um, broadening the um, borders of uh, your kingdom, and we pray that um, um, all of his um, efforts will not go in vain. We also want to thank you for everyone that made the um, decision to be here this evening, and uh, we pray that um, everybody is able to get back to their destinations in a um, safe manner. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen.